Hello, this is Victoria Viveskun with Earth Sky People Radio and Earth Sky People TV. Today is May 16th and we have a very special show because today is the release of a beautiful, beautiful healing music. This is a song that Misha Wilwind and I have created together and we would like to share this with you today. We will be having a water release ceremony today and for this please have with you water. You can have a glass of water, a bottle of water, and this will be so that we can together join in this beautiful celebration. So I would like to introduce to you, Misha. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hi. Yes. How are you, Victoria? Mm -hmm. How is it going? I'm doing awesome. And I would like to start by introducing each other, uh, reading our bios. So I'm going to read yours to start. So Misha will win creating consciousness expanding organic music that triggers an orchestra of emotions while taking your mind on a psychedelic journey. One of the most passionate and experienced musicians to be found in the history of Sri Lanka. He taught himself every existing area of music and sound and video design and worked intensively in this field for half of his life. He is the musical heart of Spirited. He channels and creates music, researches about the science of sound, and combines his passion for spirituality with the creation of his sounds. He also conceptualizes and directs the music videos and is the director of the New Earth Music Movement. His website is spiritedsounds.com. <laughs> Amazing, I love your background. And let me introduce uh, our wonderful host today, okay? Uh, Victoria Vivas is a healing teacher, material artist, and actress focusing on her connection with Lara and the 11th dimension to channel sacred frequencies and compose transcendental music. She was born in Madrid, Spain, where she began a career in professional modeling, and naturally progressing into appearing in numerous TV shows, including performances alongside Robbie Williams, Diana Ross, and The Platters, and writing the Olympic rap in cooperation with Latin music superstar Nacho Cano to represent Madrid's 2012 Olympic candidacy. In 1998, Victoria experienced a spontaneous Kundalini awakening, bringing her to the spiritual path. Victoria now has a healing center in Los Angeles, uh, where she teaches many styles of healing. Uh, her website is victoriavivas.com. So, a wonderful soul. Oh, thank you so much. That was wonderful. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. And you know, Misha, it's the fourth time that we are connecting. And I'm grateful to Gina Sitoli for putting us together at that first time, which was for an interview with New Earth Music and New Earth Theater. And that was the first, first time I heard about you and about the work you are doing. After that, we had the International Chanting for Peace, in which you offer some of these beautiful, beautiful tracks so that we could dance in some aesthetic dance. It was amazing. And then the third time was this music that we have created together with my voice and your beautiful sacred sound design. And this is the fourth time. So this is very exciting because I feel that we share many things. One of them is that we both were in entertainment normal entertainment which is not healing per se <laughs> but we progress on our own into healing music and not only that we also progress into that consciousness about transforming the earth into a beautiful paradise as it should be so you have your movement green spirit movement which is wonderful i have um oh, Earth Sky people, <laughs> I almost forgot, Earth Sky people. <laughs> <laughs> I know better yours than mine. So <laughs> I feel that we are doing so many things and, and that music is something that puts everything together and can transform the fabric of reality. So I would love for you to share about all these different movements that you are in right now. Well, I think um, uh, I just want to add something to what you just uh, started with the introduction along with how we met and then why we are doing this and and the collaboration how we came into doing this collaboration i think we should both thank uh, uh, gina catroli and also new earth nation new earth music for bringing us together 
So that this wonderful collaboration has birthed out, you know, in a very wonderful manner. Uh, we also have to say, I also have to personally mention that um, vibration has brought all of us together and not just us, you know, alongside uh, all these movements, all these things, what you are doing, all these things, what I'm doing on my end, are somewhat of a way connected with this invincible string, uh, you know, unity and peace. And it's now physically connecting us. I think we have been connected in for such a long time that it has brought us with these experiences up to this point. And I think now we are just getting ready to begin a huge journey. So just to give a background about what, uh, what I'm doing also, like what you said, yeah, we recently, you know, started a movement called Green Spirit uh, that came out of vibration intentionally uh, because we were not people who were uh, concentrating about uh, becoming planet saviors or, or any light workers or anything like that. The simple basic thing we latched on to was creating music, you know. So progression from the 2012 transformation for me personally, after I had my uh, awakening experience, uh, I transformed from creating a rock music completely into uh, organic music that is right now channeling music and, and, and healing music. So with this concept, you know, alongside with New Earth Music and, and a lot of other projects and a lot of other collaborations, uh, this Green Spirit movement has birthed out so that we can stand together with Mother Earth, you know, in one vibration, in one uh, harmony, uh, because I feel like we, a lot of us feel like uh, most people do have these intentions of being with Mother Earth, being in harmony uh, and all these things, but there's nothing that is permanently, you know, keeping us together in a balanced way for a long time, you know, consistency. So we thought of maybe creating a movement that is not political, that is not a business, or that is not an enterprise, that is totally something different uh, from what we experience right now. Um, that will exist um, with, in balance with the existing system until we come into a place where we can go into that uh, utopian system that we all have in our hearts. But to go there, I think it's a long journey, and, and most of us right now here knows, you know, it's not a journey that can be done like that. It will take some time. So Green Spirit Movement was birthed out of vibration and copyleft terms, uh, not copyright terms. So now a lot of artists around the world, like artists like you, me, and about you know, close to about uh, 50 to 75 artists right now are actively collaborating with us right now, uh, with our movement. And so it's one significance is this movement is compiled by all artists and heartwarming people. So there are no uh, any industry if you take, it should be somewhat of a relation to the art industry in some other way. So that is some. Um, significance we have in our movement. So, yeah, I think it's wonderfully collaborating with a lot of other people in a lot of other countries. I like what we are doing. I think the channeling Lara is, is one step uh, to reaching that goal because uh, your mind moves forward more than anything else. Your mind is the most uh, speed as equipment that you have right now. So, if your mind travels faster there, then physically you will be able to travel faster. So, that's why we believe that no dream is too big or too small so you can achieve anything. So this is a small beginning. So I will leave it to you right now because I have a personal question because when I was listening to your voice cuts, I had goosebumps. I still have goosebumps when I tell you the story. Uh, this pitch that you were singing on and, and, and the frequencies that you are, uh, and, and, and those techniques that you're doing with your voice, what was going on in your head at that time? What did you picture? I just wanted to ask this because there's something that I experienced while listening to this, while doing this. I want to know what you felt. I want to know what you, because it's the first time I'm asking this question from you. So uh, what did you do while you were channeling that, while you're channeling that musical piece? I still have about uh, somewhat of a uh, voice cuts that I did not use on this track that I'm using for the next uh, coming tracks from that piece. So please tell me, Victoria, how did you feel? about when you're channeling. Thank you for asking that. You know, I love that you're asking this question because it's very interesting that we never actually got together and say, let's record together. It was just, I did my part, I sent it to you, and then you did your part and sent it to me. And it was like, wow, this all really got together so well. Um, 
for me, recording the track, first of all, I was very excited to work with someone that has this sacred vision of music. To me, that is essential. I feel that sound is so powerful and we are surrounded by it all the time and it can change our lives. So it has been very difficult in my past to find someone that truly understands this and really wants to work in this way. So that's the first thing I was excited and I knew it's going to be something easy and it's going to just flourish. So what I do when I'm thinking of this, which I call sacred frequencies, <laughs> um, that I'm channeling from Lyra, um, the idea is just to really allow my frequency to connect with that part of me. So I have a very strong connection because of my, you could say, a star seed aspect or my shamanic training, all of that. It's a part of me in which I connect with that higher dimension, which is part of all of us, of course. And when I connect with that, the feeling is, I would say, like a liquid light showering over me, becoming sound to my voice. And I just share that, and it feels like bliss to me. So I know that I can achieve that state and, and share it with others, and it's just pleasant to me and blissful. So I love to do it because of that. I sing other kind of music, you know, and I, you name it, like rock and blues and soul and classical even. And it wasn't the same, you know, because it's more like getting into this structure that is not flexible. But with this channeling, especially for this track that, that we did together, it was just allowing whatever is in the moment, whatever is coming in the moment, and feel that bliss and, and sustain that frequency of bliss and share it. So I don't Wonderful. know if that explains to you a little bit Wonderful. the idea. Because the experience was, uh, for me, uh, uh, while I was listening to it, there was this purple kind of uh, light, um, very purplish energy. Uh, that is, uh, I, I, that is what I saw while I was while I was listening to your voice card. Uh, I listened to it for about one day without creating anything. I just listened to it from beginning to the end. And my co-producers, I just called my co-producer and told him, you know, come down, we, we might have to, you know, compose something together, or I don't know how we do it. And he sat there for one day and he was asking me, uh, looks like nothing is going to happen, right? So I'll make a move. So I said, yeah, you should make a move because we were listening to the track from morning and, and I, I didn't get any ideas. But as soon as he left, um, I closed my eyes and I just wanted to listen to it another few more times. And I saw this purple, very purple, which like uh, something that, you know, I think uh, this is a frequency as well. I come across this purple light, you know, in, in my visions a lot, especially when I was composing music for people and also with uh, using Krishna Murthy's voice cuts. Uh, I've, I've uh, had this experience, so that's why I mainly went into these frequencies that is significantly mentioned on on, on the promo, like 285 hertz, 528 hertz. So as many of people know, 528 hertz is more the heart frequency and resonates with the heart frequency, you know, coming from 7.8 hertz and, and then progressing up. So uh, whatever you were channeling at that time, the pitch was uh, the voice pitch. Uh, I thought of maybe using that without disrupting it at all. And the first thing that came to me was a vocal synthesis, you know, a vocal uh, piece that I chopped out and got out of, uh, you know, you. I think you sent me about a very long uh, piece of music. Like mm -hmm. what the so I really want. I really resonated with the first set of words you were talking about and how you were coming to that intro. So I wanted to use that in the beginning, and this was really fast when this track happened. It's something I think this is one of the yeah one of the most fastest compositions I've done. Not because I was in a hurry, because it really ended fast. Because I was actually working in in, in, in the communities, and I had to come back to the studio to. You know, start work on this and then it has been some time you had given me this but i didn't have much time to you know sit down and and you know completely get into it but it also has to be intuitive you know you can't just by force you sit down again okay, just let's do a track but i don't think that's <laughs> <laughs> but, 
but uh, sometimes it does. But um, in this case, it naturally came. I think I was awake till about uh, uh, from nine o'clock in the night till about twelve hours dead straight till morning even. And I was so excited when I first finished because it's like a painting. You don't know how this is going to end up. You know, you have you do hear things in your head, right? Okay, this will this will work here. This will not work here. And also at the same time, I'm channeling. Uh, while I'm listening to the music, I'm channeling more, and I'm channeling more. This is what happens to me, you know. I start channeling, and when I start channeling, it's just like a bunch of energy that comes through my uh, pranic uh, entering place, and I just have to get it out some other way. And it's not something that goes out of my hands or anything. It only goes out when I manifest it in the computer in this program, you know, in that sense. And when I listen to it, only ah, right. then I feel, ha. Huh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so this was a very special piece, and while this was going on, a lot of nice things happened. And not only that, after we finished this track, after my co-producer came in the morning, he was blown away after this. And then, then uh, it occurred to me that this is not, this is just about a fragment of something that we are supposed to do, or maybe something we might supposed to do, or something. This is just a fragment of it, but this fragment will headway to a lot of other things that's going to come forward. So that's why I decided this should be a healing guide. This should be a guide for uh, people who wants to get to know the energy of Lara, the constellation of Lara, and, and what this means. I think this is a huge experiment. We are not writing anything on stone here saying that this is a complete guide to channeling Lara, but this is a healing guide that has, I think, 11 dimensional vibrations. And especially with your voice and how it came about, and everything that is designed, even the beats that you hear in that are specially designed around your voice. So that is a main significance. But where else in Teen Swan or, or anybody else, we would just be used to a lot of other frequencies. But here, we only use, uh, we led your frequencies in, you know, multiple into other, you know, equations of, you know, healing notations and, yeah, frequency layering. I will get into frequency layering later. But uh, another question for you. Uh, what uh, how, uh, you uh, did this technique, I would love for you to explain to anybody who's listening out there, because I would like this interview to be an enlightening process for a lot of people out there who wants to do, do this kind of music. And this is something that is going to be benefited not just to people who's listening to, because if you are doing these vocals, this will benefit you directly. So I'm a vocalist. I also do these kind of chants, but I, I don't use it much on, on, on recordings, more, more or less like live or with my other projects, but not with spirited. But give us an example about, or maybe uh, give us an introduction about how you did this. I, I used, I think, um, you use this technique where in Gregorian chants, where you uh, collide frequencies. Right, you, you use this kind of technique. I, I think we are used to in this, where if you example, if you take 100 hertz and uh, you know 108 hertz, and you collide those frequencies together, and you get eight hertz. So uh, in a vocal. So could you explain, you know, what you did with your voice to the people outside there? They can get an idea about what you did with your voice. Because another thing is, we might uh, be we should release all the project files of our album, which is going to come out. Uh, since it's copy left, I'm thinking of giving this all this as a project file. Whenever somebody gets the album, they will have this as a project file also and a loop package that they can start creating healing music, their versions using your voice cuts and all that, their own voice cuts and, and, and putting it together and collaborating. So that is something I, I have in mind. So in order to get to that point, I would like to know how you do this wonderful thing with your voice. Please explain to us. <laughs> Thank you so much. You know, and when you ask me, I start having tears. Um, I always loved singing, and I had some training. Um, but this is something different when I'm doing this kind of singing. So I had a, a period in my life in which my voice was always very deep, very low pitch, like really deep. And then I had my near-death experience. <laughs> and after that, I started having this kind of very high peaks that would come just like a tiny bit 
and just go. So I asked my, my singing teacher, you know, sometimes I have this sound, and she was like, forget it, that's nothing, that, that doesn't work for singing, just leave it, you know, that doesn't work. And then another teacher also, I was learning some more classical music, and, and I was saying, I would like to use this kind of beats in order to sing. And, and he said also, no, 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 that, that, that is not voice, that is not usable, you know, so we cannot use that. So I said, okay, <laughs> so I won't use it. But then um, I really felt that there was something that I was not exploring, you know, because I think that when we think of music and we only get into the established idea of how to sing or how to create music, we are missing out most of the picture. So it's interesting because, you know, I went to see Till Swan in Utah for that interview that I had with her. Yeah. She t told me about, okay, one of your things is about sound, killing music, and about Lyra, you know, she told me all of this. And, and it really was a catalyst, you know, it was like, I knew it all my life and I had talked about it, but suddenly it was like, okay, you know, this is it, I have to do it. So as soon as I arrived back to Los Angeles, I got my singing bowl and I said, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm just going to, to put my camera to record. And I just started playing the singing bowl and allow that kind of voice that I have been using because it releases a stagnant, a stagnant energy. When I sing in that way, it releases a stagnant energy. So I sometimes had to do it in order to release very strong emotions and feel harmony again. So in this case, I did it with the intention of sharing love. And since then, I started the secret, sacred frequencies. So then, for for your for the work with you that we are doing together, I did the same. I just allow that kind of sound. And what I think that is important for all of us, if we want to bring something new, our own sound, our own voice into the world so that it counts, so that it's not just whatever it is, you know, in the, in the mainstream media, but instead that all of us can express our true essence and our true frequency. What I feel is important is not to say, oh, I need to try to imitate this or imitate that, but instead to go within and say, you know, I have no idea what is going to come out. Maybe it's going to be ridiculous. Maybe it's going to be terrible, but I don't care. You know, I'm just going to allow it through. I'm going to become an empty channel, a hollow bond. And I'm going to allow whatever it comes and I'm going to share it with others. And it is tricky because sometimes you don't know what is going to happen, you know. Yeah. Um, so I'm not, you know, sometimes I feel shy about it. Normally I, I, I don't do much uh, of this work. Um, I don't know, like I don't do concerts or anything like that, but I do my shamanic drumming circles in which opening ceremony is rattling and chanting, you know. So sometimes come things through that you don't know what it's going to be. But that is the kind of the telephone ringing to the yeah. spirit realms. Yeah. So whatever is needed, you know, just allowing that. And I feel if all of us would allow some of that magic and some of that unexpected sound and frequency and allow ourselves to be surprised, allow ourselves to be free, um, I think it really changes what art is and how much we enjoy it. And I'm saying this because I have been many years in entertainment professionally, and I, I got to a point in which I really hated to work in entertainment. I hated to dance, I hated to sing. It was like it had no spirit. So I feel that if we allow ourselves this freedom and this being true to who we are, our music will also change. So that's what I would recommend for anyone that wants to record music and sing to really allow themselves to be free. Wonderful. I think resonating with the heart is is it's the most important thing. And then yes. it's, it's 
it's all what I say to my students also. Like, it doesn't matter what your motive is. You know, you might your motive might be to create, you know, a powerful track, a healing track. It can be motive. But as much as the motive, the feeling that you're going to resonate while you're doing that track is going to be more important than anything else. So that's why we uh, when we do our workshops, we always encourage even a lot of you know we get a lot of producers who wants to learn the art of uh, you know sound designing. So when they come to us, uh, mainly you know some people who have read about this, you know about you know about general music and have somewhat of a uh, idea about what producing music in the general context is. And when they come here, they get blown out basically. You know they just ask us so. This is not so basically we tell them that whatever they are doing on 440 hertz, transform that into all the other frequencies and then try it out. And then you have unimaginable rates of scale, you know, and um, there's unimaginable possibility that you cannot you know, pin down. And you cannot actually say that these two things does not match and, and you know these notes will clash and in a different realm. Uh, where we work with our sacred sound, there are, we don't see any clashes. When you work with your heart, uh, you know, it's like an auto uh, system that you have planted inside you. You don't have to think about notations in, in that context, but you are aware. So we are teaching this to a lot of people and, and what they come around to us for a few months after creating this music, and it's not just the music that has changed. The person itself has changed completely. How he perceives music, and some people just come to us saying, oh, I only listen to progressive music or, or, or psychedelic music. But after one month behaving around us, you see this person did not hear any genres anymore. These people start uh, moving away from this categories, you know, all these categories, you know, all this. And they tune themselves into uniqueness. So they try to find more unique sound. Because when you have that taste, when you get a taste of what uh, these other frequencies, you know, take the C sharp scale or any other or, or, or melodic minor scale and just shift it to, you know, 432 hertz. Let's take a basic structure. You will find that you will get more inspired while, you know, performing on this, you know. So these kind of scales to channel your intuition and to bring what you really want to come out, you know, it disconnects. I think that's what you also do, and that's what I'm doing. In this collaboration, uh, I think we have collaborated not through space, time, you know, we have just taken it to a different level. Now I think we are uh, even discussing about a music video. So even, yeah. That, yeah, so that, even that is going to be a very exciting process because uh, light, whatever is also sound, as everybody knows, it's a frequency. So now we are uh, working with all types. So this is the first time that I'm also uh, getting into a, a vibrational healing music video kind of per se, but we haven't done anything on visual terms up to now. But we would we have some mechanisms, you know, that we use in terms of cinematics and all that, that we would love to incorporate on this and see how uh, the person visually uh, perceives this. And that will be a good experiment. And um, yeah, so I'm really excited about it. And then I'm, 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 I'm also thinking about, you know, how in other ways, because this is not just an audio production, this is a multimedia production. And, and yeah. soon, uh, Yes, soon afterwards, I think uh, my goal is one day maybe when you listen to the sound, you anyway get pictures in your head. But imagine if you get the sounds and if you are to control this, I think these are the theaters that you might find in the future. You know, you might have just a director or the dreamer wearing something in their head and basically dreaming what they dream and, and listening what they listen to, and that will appear on screen. So these are the technologies that we are trying to move forward with our music. We are just not dreaming about it. We are practically working on it. And that cannot be approached only by technical terms. That has to approach through the heart and also the feeling that you know, the exterior vibrations. And especially with sacred sound, um, there are a lot of other uh, polarities that you have to be aware of when you're doing these things. So, yeah, I think um, one thing I have to mention again before I forget, we used uh, a technique called uh, frequency layering in this. I think uh, even in your voice, I, I use this. Uh, there are certain frequencies that the human ear might not hear, but 
the frequencies are transmitted to the speaker, certain speakers, or all frequencies are uh, intentionally coming out of this. But we only hear that is in our range 25,000 hertz up to that level to you know, But we use a technique that let people feel these frequencies. Example, there's a frequency, and maybe it's a healing frequency, maybe it's some other frequency that we are using to change uh, the vibration of this song. But this is not heard intentionally through a sound like this. It's not in the hearing range. But we do layer these kind of frequencies. We can see them on the spectrum. So what we do is we measure them on the spectrum, and we layer it to maybe your vocals. You know, we layer it so that it triggers like something like this will trigger the sound of the invincible sound that you don't hear. So that you will, since we are physical beings, we perceive things more physical sound and all that. So when you have something aiding that in a consistent uh, uh, parameter in a tempo, this has an uh, effect. So we've been experimenting this with the early stages of music. In this track also we use this. So if you look at these numbers also, it's very sacred numbers, 285 hertz, 528 hertz, and 825 to 852 hertz. Now all these numbers, if you look at them, uh, it's 285 in different, different equations. And even this I found out after I finished the composition. And while I was uh, writing you know, my review, every, after finish every track, I will do a personal review of myself you know, about the track or how I feel about it. Because uh, I'm writing a book about uh, uh, introduction to healing frequencies and about sound, sacred sound design. So I'm, I'm gathering information for this, you know, the, the compositions that I'm making. Even in this, I've mentioned this. So, for me, this was the first time that I did a track that only uh, emphasizes these frequencies, and all of these frequencies ended up with the number 285. I'm trying to find out an astrological connection to this with the 11th dimensional state, but still I didn't have time to do this research. So I'm saying all these things are connected in unseen ways, and, and even for people like, you know, two people like you and me to come together from two different sides of the world, to collaborate on the musical piece, it's something really special. For me, it's really special because I've been doing this for the last few years, and it only is getting more exciting and exciting every time. And oh, yeah. I, this is such an exciting experience. And so much has come out, and so much I've learned from this. I hope you also have learned so much from this. And we're still learning, and still has a huge journey to go, and I'm completely looking forward to creating this album, you know, the experience of creating this album. It's going to be a wonderful journey. <laughs> yes, and you know, I want to share also how incredible it was for me to receive the track and when I received it. And there is no coincidence, as we know. So when I received the track, I think I, I, I mentioned to you that I wasn't at home. I was in my shamanic training. Yes. So I was in this, you know, very, very intense training, with initiations and all sorts of things. And suddenly I received the track from you and I started listening to it and I couldn't stop listening to it. Like I had to put it in replay and replay and listen it again and again and again. And it really opened my heart and put myself in a, I don't know, in a state that was so peaceful, so blissful, so healing, so comforting. It felt like home. It felt like being in Lira, like being, it was very special. So I continued listening to it, listening to it. And for a long time after that, I continued just listening to it all day, weekly, weekly. So I really feel that it's a very clean track. And I love that you put all these different frequencies in the of and um, all the different frequencies that can be really, really helpful to people. And especially this that you are sharing right now about things that we cannot even consciously hear, but but still are going to change the make makeup of who we are because all of those sounds, whether we hear them or not, with our ear, our bodies are going to embrace them and resonate with them. And I can really notice that. So I feel that that's what art should be. Art have that potential of being something that transforms and heals the world. And I really think that this is it, you know, and I'm so excited about creating the music video because 
in that way, like if you go to the higher dimensions, everything is about light and sound. So if we can put that in a music video, <laughs> that's well, what it is music to be, right? Yeah. Music television should be that, and all the the entertainment industry. Then we will be really at our best. We will be healthy. We will be happy. We will be really taking care of ourselves and our communities. And I feel that's something that it, it was done in a way in all these shamanic traditions or the tribes when they were drumming and doing all these things. But we don't need to just stay there. Now we have all these frequencies that weren't available before. So incorporating all of this as, as you did in this track is something that I feel I can't wait to share it with everyone. And I'm so happy that today we're doing the launch of our song, the release of our song. <laughs> It's, it's, it's amazing because uh, art should always be unique. And, and there are a lot of people out there who think that you can't be unique. Well, this is a good example. In mm -hmm. art, you're always unique when it comes from the heart. You know, there's nothing is the same. Yeah, you might see some similarities, but that doesn't mean it's all the same. The concept is the same only. But um, people, I think, um, should really understand that there are no limitations to when it comes to creation. You have been taught limitations in your schools when you do your music, you do your art or wherever. There are so much limitations. But trust me, where you dissolve these boundaries, when you dissolve all these limitations, there's unimaginable possibilities just manifest in front of you. If then it's a matter of just choosing the elements you need to be unique. So this is how we create music, and this is how the new generation right now who's coming up, um, they're doing it. I, I see that happening, but I do not see the media, the commercial media coming into play at this place. But there are a lot of musicians who are right now saying we don't own our composition. So I'm proud to say that we have a label, Spirited Records, that uh, more than 80% of our musicians are now turning into copy left, just following us and following our terms and seeing the possibilities. So yeah, I think art uh, becomes unique and it becomes more precious when it becomes unique. And then when you let it resonate in that hard space, I think for anybody out there who's thinking that, oh, we don't know whether we can make music like that, but trust me, any human being on this earth are capable of making this music. And if there's anybody who says otherwise, well, you bring them to me. <laughs> and I will. Uh, this is the truth that we know from our history. And this is the truth that we have learned. Anybody who is willing to do this, this is not something that we bring from our birth. Yeah, we do. Might have you know we might have practiced these things in our other lifetimes, but that that does not cut the line of saying that okay, I'm in my first lifetime. Maybe this I want to listen to music can become a uh, you know a vibration hilo you know, get into this aspect. Yes, you can do. It. I'm saying that because there were people who came to me saying that I do not I don't think I can ever become a sound engineer. People who came to me saying I don't think I can ever play guitar because my fingers are short. There's so many musicians I've trained up to now in my whole life. And most of them came to me saying that I don't think I can do that. Well, they, they are right now, you know, 90% of them, they are right now, you know, out there doing unique things. And still, they can't even believe that they are there. Well, I'm saying it can be done. Anybody can do it. And these are techniques that is residing within us. It's not exterior. So if you tune in to your own self and to what you really want to you know, do, I think it starts appearing, you know. So this is not magic. This is not uh, you know spiritualism, AK one or anything like that. This is just fundamental ethics. You know, you resonate in this frequency, you you will get whatever that frequency you're resonating. With, you know, so mm -hmm. yeah, just a little note on that for people who's thinking that okay, we don't know whether we can take it. Yes, anybody can. Whether you know music in the commercial context or whether you don't know music, yes, you can. You don't need to know music to start creating music. It's natural. It's in you. Thank you for sharing that. And you know, I'm thinking now how excited I am about you doing this transformation because you know what it is to create music that is not healing music. Oh, yes. <laughs> and how can influence people in a way that is not the best. So it's like before we were feeding the system, we were feeding the matrix, but now we understand that that is not what we should do. If we want to to really help others. So I feel that this transformation through your career is just really 
going to have a lot of a ripple effect. All yeah, the people that are doing now, you know, is going to be so be um, beneficial for them now. So I'm very excited about that transformation. And not only yeah. that, also, I would like to add to that that anybody that would like to either download the preview or purchase the song, um, all the benefits are going to go to Green Spirit Movement and to Earth Sky people. So <laughs> all of this is going to be for creating a better world and do whatever we can so that everything continues rolling. So it's not about, you know, like when you buy something in the store, but instead it's something that is going to stay in the community. Yeah. And it's also going to help, you know, uh, uh, us create the album because we are going to finish off this with a 77 minute composition. Uh, this is just the first few minutes of that 77 minute guide or, 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 or journey. So it will help us, you know, uh, see, there are a lot of people who say, uh, says that you can't, um, if you are a copyleft musician, you know, how are you supposed to make a living out of just selling music? Well, number one, you don't have to sell your music to start, you know, making a living out of it in that context. Because we have already outgrown from this ancient, you know, barbaric concepts that you know you have to be a musician and and a musician has to do everything that they don't like to become uh, what they want to become you know like example when we were growing up we wanted to do original music but in our country uh, we were never allowed to play original music why right? they wanted to hear the covers they wanted to hear the hit covers so we basically from that age from the age of like 16 uh, i transformed myself you know to doing original music so this this transformation, you know, coming from that end, you know, training yourself to be unique, uh, it's something that um, a lot of people uh, feels like, you know, it's not. Uh, we always have to do something we don't like, you know. Even even I see a lot of musicians right now. Yeah, I I want to do my own band, but I'm just doing these commercials, you know, so that I can get to that point. Well, well, we gave that up, you know. We basically, you know, yeah, it's it's a risk. Yeah, a lot of people say, "Aren't you risking your career?" Well, your whole life, your existence is a risk. You know, you can die this next second. You don't know. So, what are you going to do? You don't know whether you're going to live till tomorrow. You don't know that. So, this is how all just things that will limit you. So, we see this as you know, an opportunity to break free. Now, for me, I completely started creating healing music and first you know few years you know nobody even knew about us you uh, know and and still a lot of people came to me and asked me hey, you're a rock musician you're known for rock music you're known for you know doing this stuff why what are you doing <laughs> so i said oh, i'm doing what i like to do you know i'm doing my i'm being my true passion you know, like, yeah I, I used to do rock music but that does not resonate with me anymore yeah i still do rock music but not the way i used to do it i do it in a very different context in a very different level in a very different dimension when it comes to that genre it's much more personal because i grew up with that genre and it's it's not a because through that genre i started seeing the other genres you know for me growing up in a war-based country seeing people dying every day you know uh, it was a really harsh thing to come by yeah it's, you know for a certain extent of time music did help us you know even that 440 frequencies even the lyrics you know yeah it did help us i'm not saying it did that's something that people need to understand. Even those music, you know, certain people when they made it, even though in a 440 hertz frequency, they made it with that intention. So they vibrated in that intention. So still, that music. That's why you still have your favorites, even though if it's 440 hertz. You know, then some. Those are also healing music. I would, I had, I could select some music out there right now, starting from Michael Jackson to you know any other artist. You know, there are tracks. You can call them healing music because you feel them. I feel them. There are a lot of people who feel, them. yeah, it's done on 440 hertz, but that does not mean the other polarities comes into you know, play. So you do not always have to do you know the things that you don't like to become a healing musician or to do this. You know, you can always get into the path because through collaboration, through this copy lessons, through sharing, that's what I'm coming to say, through the sharing aspect, the more other aspects come about, you know, you cannot value that. You know, to money. So I would, I, I see this as an opportunity for both of us to expand in an area that we, uh, you know, we truly passionate about, and for somebody to be really inspired and and to stop thinking, you know, and start doing it, you know. 
and to be who you are. We are just being who we are and doing what we do. We are not doing something so that we can be that. You know, we are who we are and we are doing, we are resonating in that frequency and we are creating this music. And then we are happy. <laughs> so yeah. So I think you can do anything that you love and, and you know and still keep doing it, you know, there's no limitations for that. Thank you for sharing that. And I feel that this also will help a lot of artists that you know, I live in Los Angeles, I used to live in Hollywood. Yeah. Um, and I feel that when you live in Hollywood, you know that many, many of us were there because they want to be part of the big machine <laughs> in the mainstream. And as you said, there is healing music, but that healing music is because it has heart in it, it has soul in it. So we receive that healing from the person that is sharing their hearts. Now, if we are just working, as you said, because we need to pay the bills and we think in our minds, oh, this is the way for me to really be successful. I have to do this kind of music or that kind of music. That is going to totally kill any beneficial energies from the music. So I feel it is very important for any people that is listening right now that wants to be a musician, an actor, anything like that, just make sure that your heart is the first thing that you share in your art, because that's what touches so many people, that's what makes you successful in a true way, and I feel that's what, what really heals. <laughs> so yeah. I feel that is truly essential. So thank you for yeah. sharing that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, tell me, please. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. please, go ahead. I was just thinking of the ceremony. Should we go into the ceremony? Do you have something else that you would like to share? Well, uh, I think we should uh, say uh, the track is going to be released. So anybody who's out there who's more interested in, in maybe collaborating with this album, even yeah, we are open minded about this. If there are anybody who wants to collaborate on this also, we are open to suggestions. So listen to the track. Uh, help us out. All the funds are going into Earth Sky People and Green Spirit Movement, uh, and also for the creation of this uh, upcoming album. And uh, keep your eyes open. There's going to be a music video soon going to be coming out for this in collaboration from two countries from opposite sides of the world. So it's going to be <laughs> interesting. Uh, technique, you know, technically, it's going to be very interesting, and also uh, the energy I am still I'm feeling. This is going to be really interesting. So the track is out there on Spirited Records, and also you will find links from Victoria Vivas to this um, um, label. So it's released by Spirited Records, and also we're planning uh, once the album is complete, the album will be released through Spirited Records and New Earth Music. So we are planning on having a team discussion later on once the album comes out, and to see uh, what our team thinks about it, and. Um, along with some other few albums. So this also will be released to New Earth Music in the coming future. So anybody out there who wants to get involved, now is the time. Awesome. So, yeah. yeah, and That's I will put... Yeah, please go ahead. Sorry. I will put all the links in the description of the video so that everybody can go get the preview, download the song, everything. And also, now that you mentioned New Earth Music, that reminds me that Another reason why we are connected is because of Sasha Stone. Because yes. I think that Gina saw my interview with Sasha, and that's why she contacted me for interviewing yeah. you both. So we are all all connected in some way, and I love that. <laughs> we are connected in a huge uh, unseen thread. You know, that's that's something that inspires me. You know, like uh, where, you know, I'm in a small little island in, in, in the Indian Ocean here. And uh, by being in this island, I have this opportunity to connect with people from all around the world, and physically also come, who's coming into this island, and also uh, you know technical wise with people like you, and, and connecting and building up this you know soul family kind of thing, you know, everywhere. So yeah, I think Sasha and his vision, whatever he's doing with New Earth Nation, also you know brought us together in this way. There are a lot of people out there who's going in this journey in their own different polarities and their own different journeys, but going into this one common goal that we are all going to. But we are going in different, different directions. I see this as a huge circle. People are coming from all different directions. This mm -hmm. sacred place where we're trying to go. So yeah, there are bound to be mistakes. There are bound to be fun times. There are bound to be, you know. So it's all about the process. 
So yeah, I think it's an interesting process, and this track and and what we're doing with the music that Sky People and and what you are doing, especially uh, with your healing center and, and and the educational processes, and also this information that you are sharing with people, is going to bring a lot of people together in the future to collaborate. And I would like to say something last before the water ritual is that collaboration is the key to demolishing all these boundaries that you have from one human being to another so start collaborating you will see yourself with yourself in others start collaborating you will see yourself in everybody you collaborate and that is more inspiring than anything else you don't then these unseen boundaries of religion race culture you name it all these things will disappear so that's my last words before the water ritual Thank you so much. Beautiful last words, and I couldn't agree more. It's amazing to have this feeling that we are all coming together as a family and creating things. It is not about, oh, do I have money to pay for a singer, or do I have money to pay for a composer, or, you know, it's just, let's do something. We, have, we are souls. Let's go together and do something together. We have all that we need. All that we need is each other. So, yes, I couldn't agree more. Let's collaborate and create everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, for this ceremony, my ancestors, oh my guys, were speaking to me last night and they showed me that I have to go outdoors. And we're going to be doing the ceremony with water. So it's going to be sacred water really ceremony. Water is so important. Um, when we come into life, we come through the womb, and all this water, right, is coming with us, welcoming us in, into this world. It's the like the, the carrier of our bodies into this world. So in this case, also we're going to be working with water for the release of this track. Also, water is something that connects us because it's in all of us, and it resonates with frequencies so much. So I would like for this track that Misha and I have brought together, I would like for this track to really be based in this sacred water and, and be cleansed so that the healing potential that it has is increased. So this is my intention for this process. So I will go outside, you will see my, the tree of my ancestors outside. It's a walnut tree, beautiful. You will see a big crystal, a quartz crystal that will be representing our song, which is called Channeling Lyra. And then you will be seeing uh, some other things, but basically I will do, I will be guided. I don't know what is going to happen, <laughs> but we have water out there. So I'm going to just take the computer and, okay, let's see. We're going outside. <laughs> This is going to be amazing. Let's see. I have to, to make sure that you can see everything. So I'm going to place the computer here. Yes. Wow, that's nice. Okay. So that is going to be... You have the crystal there. So I take this opportunity to connect with my ancestors in harmony with all of your ancestors so that all together with water in our heads can join in this ritual for the release of the song Channeling Lyra so that every time that you listen to this song you can go deeper and deeper into your own healing the healing of the waters of our planet the healing of our communities of our nature. We have here the tree of my ancestors and also a crystal representing our song. This is my song, Misha's song, it is also your song. So I'm just going to bathe the crystal with the waters and just allowing this water to cleanse and to bless the 
release of this beautiful track. So with the water that you have with you, just hold it against your heart. Take a deep cleansing breath, visualizing all this water, connecting with you, connecting with the rivers, with the creeks, with the oceans, with the lakes, all these waters that connect all earth. Visualize this water becoming crystalline, shining beautiful light. And this light reaching every person, every soul, every heart, connecting all of us so that there are no boundaries, no limitations, all of us as one family all around the world. Take a deep cleansing breath, visualizing water raining down as a beautiful shower of light coming down from the 11th dimension from Lyra, raising you, cleansing your energy, raising your frequency, allowing you to expand your consciousness so that you realize all the beauty of who you truly, truly are. We place all our love in this water and we drink it so that we can communicate with this blessing. Yes. And with this, the release of our song, your song, Channel Lira, is complete. Thank you for your support, your time, and your friendship. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Misha. Thank you, Victoria. So lovely. Very <laughs> All right. <laughs> so that was our presentation and our release to share with each of you the song that Misha and I with so much more right? Misha, it is such an honor, a pleasure to be working with you. I really appreciate all that you are doing and I know that this is just the beginning. Our family continues expanding. We continue really taking that responsibility of transforming our beautiful earth. And thank you so much, Victoria. And this has been an amazing experience. This few minutes that we spent together, um, I'm, I'm, I'm getting more information as I speak to you, you know, on, on different levels. So this track is, like you said, it's just the beginning. And thank you for everyone. You know, thank you for all the seen and unseen energies that's around me and you right now for this collaboration to take place. And yeah, we're making history right now. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you for that. Thank you so much and bye-bye everyone. Love you. <laughs>